Welcome back to Flat Tire Farm. I hope it's warm where you're at. It sure is starting to get warm here. Yesterday afternoon it was 40 degrees. Now it's still dropping below freezing every night, but it won't be freezing for much longer. And so what that means is that my outdoor frozen food storage system has to start getting broken down and I need to start getting that food processed before it goes bad. Today we're going to process a bunch of chopped celery that I had frozen in the snowbank and we'll get it canned up for soup stock. This may just seem like a contractor bag leaning against the side of my house, but wait, there's more. Inside is 50 pounds of organic celery, and today we're going to make a ton of soup stock. Okay, this stuff is still frozen. You might be able to hear it crunch. So, I guess we better get cracking, huh? I'm going to make a couple different kinds of stock today. The first one we're going to do is just straight celery because I want to start getting this celery um, into the canner before it really melts and becomes a big mess. Now it's important that when I put these in the canner, I make sure that the temperature of the stuff in the jars and the temperature of the water in my canner is relatively the same. I wouldn't take this frozen celery and stick it in boiling water because it might destroy my jars. Um, but I'm going to pour hot broth over these and that will get them to be at least room temperature. And I'm not going to start heating up my water until I put the jars in there. Um, that way everything heats up together. I sometimes lose track of time when I'm canning and I'll heat the water up and it just sits there hot and I'm wasting propane and I don't like to do that. Um, and then I have to leave the top off so it doesn't pressurize or get... I don't get steam burns when I open the top and then the steam goes everywhere and I don't want all that moisture in my kitchen um, because we are not vapor barriered yet. And so if I do that too much, it will rain inside my house. And that's very exciting when that happens. <laughs> now I'm trying to make sure I fill these with four cups of chopped celery if that helps you um, with your recipe. Um, sometimes they're getting a little full on the top, but that's okay because I'm going to pour hot liquid over them and so they'll um, settle down a little bit. Um, and then I'll have room for my headspace. Okay, all the jars are filled now. And I just have this um, powdered chicken stock. Um, I'm kind of cheating a little bit. Um, you could use your regular bone broth if you have it or chicken stock. You can boil a chicken down and make your own. But I have an abundance of this powdered stock. Um, so I'm going to use it today. Normally you would make your stock or broth in a big pot and then you would portion it into all these jars. So I'm going to put two tablespoons in each one and then I don't have hot running water. I have running gravity fed water. Um, basically we haul water upstairs and it gravity feeds to my faucet and my kitchen sink. For the hot water we have a 10 gallon stock pot that sits on our wood stove. Um, it has a spigot on the bottom. It has a temperature gauge on it and everything. It's, it's kind of cool like that. But it's where we use all of our hot water. Hot water for showers, hot water for dishes, warm water for animals. Um, and it's how I'm going to use this hot water um, to make this stock for the celery. And so I'm going to pour it in there and give myself an inch of headspace. An inch of headspace is just to the first ring on your jar top. So there's your inch of headspace. Um, and you can see that celery is all floating around in there. And it's not all full up like this one is full to the top. As soon as I poured that hot liquid on, that started melting down. Okay. So, we're just going to keep filling them up, and then we'll get the canner going. And you want to make sure that you get the bubbles out. Um, people use little bubble tools. Yeah, I just shake the jar around to get the bubbles out. There's enough liquid in there that, that that's going to work. Okay, we're on our last jar. That's all done. I'm going to give everybody a shake and see if anybody needs any more water, or if I gave somebody too much water. This little guy has a little bit too much. I'm going to get us a spoon. Spoon some of his water out. Let's move him to his neighbor. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, that little bubbler tool that people use also has a measure, like a little measuring thing on it for your headspace, but I don't need to do that. Some people do. I used to be really bad at measuring and estimating. Um, lengths and things like that, but Mr. Reeb is a contractor and a finished carpenter and I worked with him for a while and so he taught me how to eyeball it pretty good. But for 40 years I was real bad at it, but now I'm doing okay. Um, 
So normally you would wipe the rims off. You wouldn't worry too much about any grease getting on here because it's just celery, but there might be some fat solids in that um, powdered stock I was using. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of white vinegar and a paper towel, and that'll cut any of the grease if there is any. If it was just celery and water, I would just take a wet paper towel. I wouldn't need to use the vinegar, um, but I wanna be extra careful. Also, I'm going to reuse canning lids. Now that's a controversy between people and you should do what you feel comfortable with. If you are new to canning, you should definitely follow the rules. I'll put a link below for um, this, the National Center for Food Preservation. They have all the rules um, and they also don't have how to can celery. Um, but I'm an experienced canner and lots of people can celery. But like I said, you should choose what you are most comfortable with. In my travels of being a canner, I found some things that didn't necessarily make sense to me um, about what was logical and what was not logical. So one of them is reusing canning lids. They're supposed to be a one-time use. And that's because they have a little rubber seal on them that um, when it pressurizes, it seals to the jar and that um, is what creates your airtight seal and prevents um, foodborne illnesses. I've gone through all these lids already because I generally don't keep lids in my kitchen that wouldn't be a lid I would reuse. Then I never accidentally reuse something. But I do have some examples of lids that I would use and lids that I wouldn't reuse. This has nice, nice rubber on it. There's no Mars on the edges. Okay, it's beautiful. As soon as this heats back up in the canning water, it's going to plump back up and make a beautiful seal. Okay. Here are some that I would not reuse, and I'll try to do my best to show you um, why not. Okay, so this edge here has little ripples on it. I don't know if you can see it, but when it got opened, it got squished. Um, and I'm not going to reuse that lid. Actually, I'm just going to throw it away because I don't want it in my kitchen and I don't want to accidentally reuse it. This one has a little tiny rust stain there because this enamel has been scratched. And so this is not food safe now. It's not poisonous for sure, but it's not as food safe as if it had the coating and I surely don't want to pressure can with it. Okay, so it's going on the wayside also. This one has, it might be a little easier to see, there's a mar on the top, on the edge. I want this edge to be perfectly round. I want this rubber to be nice and plump and not wore out. And I want there to be no scratches or rust on this enamel. That's how I determine whether I reuse it or not. So all these three are getting chucked. Now reusing lids is good for me because it means that I save money. I don't like to throw things in the landfill if I don't have to. Um, I like to reuse things. We live on a homestead. It means we don't have infinite resources. So, so I don't heat up my canner ahead of time. Um, I do a lot of canning the way I do because I'm reusing resources. Like I got the hot water off the wood stove because the wood stove's already running and that water sits on there and I not have to pay for any fuel to heat up that water. Anyways, you'll hear many of my lectures about reusing stuff. Hmm, let's double check that lid. It's not sitting on there good. Yep, I'm not comfortable with that. He's a little bowed. I don't want to use that one. So I'm going to go grab a different one. Okay, now you put the rings on finger tight. Now, people said finger tight a whole bunch to me, and I never knew what they meant. So this is what I figured out is finger tight for me. I hope it's helpful for you. You'll probably see this in all my canning videos because I feel like it's important to let people know what you're talking about. Um, so you put the ring on till it just first catches, okay? It's just starting to catch the threads, and then I take it and turn it an eighth of the diameter of the jar lid, and that's finger tight to me. Now, I could wrench it down and get more out of it, but it's on there, okay? So, I just spin it till it catches. As soon as it catches, I go an eighth of the diameter of the jar, done. When I need to fill up big things of water, I don't use the water from the faucet in the sink because there's only a limited storage of that water and we have to haul it upstairs to make it run down to the faucet. So we have this extra seven gallon um, aquatainer for um, big projects like canning. And so I just stick it up here and turn it on. And that's the magic. I'm going to fill up this container till it's two inches of water in the bottom. That's perfect for pressure canning. Okay, we got our two inches of water here. We're on the stove. And we're just going to stick them in there.
Okay, we got everybody in there. We're gonna put the lid on. We're gonna let it vent for 10 minutes. And that just means when the steam starts coming out the top, and we're gonna let it do that for 10 minutes. We'll close the vents, put the weight on there. It'll come up to, when it comes up to 10 pounds of pressure, we'll start the timer and it'll can for 40 minutes. Next, we're going to make a vegetable soup base. Um, so I can add chicken to it, I can add beef to it. It'll just be what I dump in a pot when I wanna make soup. You can use lots of different kinds of vegetables for making a vegetable stock or a vegetable soup base. You just have to double check the pressure cook times. So you wanna cook it for whatever the longest vegetable time is. So let me give you an example. Celery's at 40 minutes pressure cooking time for quarts. And carrots are 30 minutes pressure cooking time for quarts. So I'm gonna make sure that I do it for the 40 minutes and not for the 30 because I want to have it be as safe as possible and be able to store it as long as possible. I got the carrots all peeled. I'm gonna cut the ends off. Throw them in the pile for the pigs. And actually, I think I'm gonna feed it to the goats. Goats don't always get very many snacks because they can only, well, number one, they're picky. And number two, they only can really eat fresh fruits and vegetables. So here's our shavings. We'll see if the goats will even try it. They like prunes, I know that. In nice big chunks if we're gonna make beef stew out of it or something like that. Okay, looks like I only overdid the carrots by a little bit. We got eight cups. Ooh, that was loud. Plus that much more. Okay, we're on to the onions. I feel like four onions is probably gonna be pretty good for this batch. Um, and I'll throw it in this bowl, I'll mix it all up, and then I can just dump the onions and carrot mixture in first, and I'll put the celery on top. And we'll fill up the jars for our next batch. But we gotta wait for that one to get done first. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna put about a cup and a half of the onion and carrot mixture in each jar and a bay leaf. Um, somewhere along the line, I decided I need a gallon of bay leaves. And at the time I decided I needed a gallon of bay leaves, I had only ever used five my whole life. So I am working on um, ways that I can use up bay leaves. Okay, I'm just gonna run you through one jar of vegetable soup base. Now remember, you can put whatever vegetables that you want in there, make sure one, they can be pressure canned, and two, that you check the times on them. But this is my version for the things that I need to process and use up so they don't go bad. A bay leaf. <laughs> Cup and a half of vegetables that I need to use up, but not horribly so. And then the rest, we're gonna fill up with the vegetables I need to horribly so use. I'm just gonna cram it in there. Dropping stuff along the way. Okay, cram it in. A couple tablespoons of stock, powdered stock. You can use, you can even use water if you want to. Um, you can use water with a little bit of salt in it. You could use um, vegetable stock chicken stock, a beef stock if you want. Um, there was a point we had moose stock, we don't have that anymore. But I'm gonna fill it till it's one inch head space, okay? Give a paper towel out, vinegar. Wipe the rim real good. There we go. Put the lid on there, we're gonna do finger tight. I'll just do that 12 more times. I guess 11 more times, huh? Give it a shake. Now the vegetables are kind of um, staggered in here, but want to dump it in the pot to make soup um, when it's all done. It's not really gonna matter. Okay, we're beefing over here. It's time to turn this off and we'll let it cool down for a while. And then we'll take them out and see how we do. I got my grab a hot jar gloves on. Let's see how we did. Ooh, it's still boiling. Ooh, this sounds real bad. You probably can, there you go. Now you can see something. All right, we'll pull all these out. We'll start the next batch and we'll keep on rolling. Okay, we got everything all canned up. We ended up with 36 quarts of soup base and all the lids sealed, even the ones I reused. Here's our vegetable one. Here is her plain celery soup mix. Now I'm gonna use this when I have some leftover meat I need to use up. I'll dump it in a pot, put some meat in it, maybe some potatoes or other vegetables that might need to be used up. Or I could make it into a cream-based soup by adding some cream or a little bit of a roux. As always, thanks for joining us at Flat Tire Farm. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Stay tuned for more videos about canning and how we make a normal life happen on this small off-grid Alaskan homestead.